Well, aloha, and how you doing? How you doing? And how are you doing? <laughs> you guys are throwing me off already. <laughs> oh, here we go. Gordo the Techs are here, and I am uh, here on Hibachi Talk, and I'm here with my good old buddy, Rix the Fun Meister Mauer. Hey, Gordo. Nice, uh, R-I-X, just for those. <laughs> I'll say it over and over again. And my good old buddy, Hawala Greedy. Man, good to see you, What's man. Up, Gordo? It's always fun. Good stuff. Hawala's um, got a great story to tell, so please grab yourself a libation, pull up a chair, sit down, and we'll spend a little time here on Hibachi Talk on a Wednesday afternoon at 2, our new time and our new day. So this is our first one, which is kind of interesting because I'll uh, just give a little background on you, is that you were on one of my first shows, yes. which was Fridays at, at um, 1. So welcome to, we're going to catch up a little bit. So Sounds great. Like we always do, um, I have a little segment. I have to rant for a little bit, okay? So just bear with me one second. So I was at the airport last week, and um, Rich, if you can throw up this picture. And there's been a lot of stuff in the news at the airport. Well, I was at gate 60 getting ready to get on my plane, and there was more rain in the airport than there was outside the airport. Wow. It was coming down in buckets. So we had to, there was no buckets either, so we had to duck through the gate 60 to get in. To get into to get into the plane, uh, passengers were having a great deal of fun with it. Um, uh, the employees of Hawaiian Airlines were not, <laughs> and the state state was sitting and counting as usual. <laughs> anyway, my rant of the week. So, Wallet, great to have you on the show. Same here. You're your ultimate entrepreneur. Um, started many, um, you got through many phases, and uh, when we came when you came on the show last time, you were talking about this new idea you had called Pow Box. Yep. So first, I just tell like, like, where did you go to school? Because you're not one high maka maka punahu type guy. Right. Punahu, punahu, <laughs> whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm a proud McKinley grad. Uh, went to college in Oregon. Came back home in 2001. Started Hawaii's first spam and virus filter called Pal Spam. Uh, you, you and I were a part of that. That yep, was a great time. Yeah, it was fun. That was great. And then uh, didn't make a lot of money, but it was fun. Yeah, well, now it's 2.0, and Powbox yeah. is the next iteration. Mm -hmm. And Powbox provides seamless encryption for HIPAA compliant email. And we thought we were on to a big idea. So as soon as we got some customers under our belt, uh, I moved the show to San Francisco. So you took it out of here. So, yeah. so you started Powbox, which is HIPAA compliant encrypted email. Yeah. Um, very simple to deploy. There's not a lot of things that the, uh, the buyer or the consumer has to do. That's correct. Now, um, but why did, so, but you did it, you started it here, so why would you not just stay in yeah. beautiful Hawaii where the entrepreneur is king? Man, so <laughs> we'd, uh, we'd have these prospects on the phone um, saying, hey, this is a great product you have. Why doesn't Microsoft or Google have this approach? This is clearly the way encrypted email should be. And further into the phone call, they'd figure out that, you know, we were in Hawaii, and they'd just be like, yo, uh, I think this is a gimmick, click. I think you surf all day, gimmick. And it drove me nuts. Wow. So we went to San Francisco. And we're not trying to be a part of any other city but San Francisco. I believe that's part of our brand. I believe we're onto a big idea. And you know, we just need a big market to execute the plan. So uh, how many clients did you have when you left here? I five. Mean, you had five. So yeah. you had five when you left here. And when did you leave? What year was that? January 2015. Okay, January 2015, so yeah. that's um, April 2017, that's... A little over two, two years. little over two years, yeah. wow. So, um, I'm thinking of you and HIPAA compliant email, man. You would have drove me crazy. He loves this stuff, you know. Yeah, well, and, I, and in my former life, I was actually the first compliance officer for a local hospital. Yeah. And so I have a, you know, a background on that and how things have, you know, have evolved over the time of back in, I think it was probably the you know the early to mid '90s yep. when HIPAA first came out. '96, Bill yeah. Clinton. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And you know, if we had had these kinds of tools back then, things would have been a lot easier, would have been a lot better, I think, as, as well. So I would really encourage people to look at this product that you have. Thanks, Rick. Because the emails, I mean, those are so easy to push out and so hard to remember, wait a minute, this could be a HIPAA compliant email. I've got to have it uh, encrypted yeah. to stay, if I'm in an, an organization that's you know, required to encrypt those kinds of, or to keep those things uh, safe. Rick, that's a great and, yeah, point. And to keep it so that it's, it's gonna happen behind, and I don't always have to have it, 
you know, just right in front of mind with the product. So we take a, a different approach to encrypted email. And what we provide for our customers is we encrypt all emails for all users, all devices, without asking the customer to change their behavior. So we take Perfect. the approach that everything should be encrypted. And Perfect. if we don't ask them to change their behavior, then we can provide them with seamless encryption. And that's the big idea. And that's the big thing. So if I'm using this, yes. or if I'm using this, right. I don't have to change anything that I'm doing. Yes. I'm yes. just sending the email, and I'm receiving the email, I don't have to go to a website and create Correct. up a portal and all that yeah. stuff yeah. and remember it. I just continue to send my email. Yeah, that's the big idea is, hey, um, give the customer the benefit without asking them to change their behavior. Okay. And I think that's the future of encrypted email. Okay, so now you or said... the internet, actually. Yeah. That's the future of the internet. So you, you, you um, and we won't get into the technical aspects of it, but I'm thinking, sorry, you said five, cli five clients yeah. when you left here in 2015. Yes. Okay, how many clients you got now? So we ended that first year with 100, we ended the next year with approaching 500, and now we're pushing 650 customers in all 50 states. We're in India, China, Australia, uh, but primarily in the United States. We're in all 50 states. Oh, all 50 states. I was going to ask you, are you in any other co countries? I remember at one Japan. point you were talking to Mexico at some point in time. Yeah, that, we had some uh, language issues. So yeah. that well, kind of went and to a bed. few other things, I'm sure. So yeah. The cartel wanted to use yeah. encrypted email. Yeah, there was some, uh, <laughs> that actually did come up. It did it? Yeah, yeah. some <laughs> reporters reached out to us and and we chose to stay away. Yeah. Uh, the reporters were getting assassinated, basically, yeah. by the cartel. By the cartel. And, and they wanted a way to encrypt secure. their email. Yeah, I was like, hey, you know, that's not our laser focus. So. <laughs> we're in healthcare, yeah. but not US, that kind. Yeah, US healthcare. <laughs> yeah. So now, you know, so you can't be a one-man show anymore then if you've got sure. 650 clients and, yeah. and um, and in you know, all 50 states, yeah. um, what's your employee count now? So right now we're at 11, okay. five are in sales. We want to keep a ratio of 40 to 50% of the company in sales. Okay. Uh, we have sales quotas that we've put into place this year. Right. And we've exceeded sales quotas each month of the year, so that's been great. Um, and then the rest of our team's filled in with management, well, to management, mm -hmm. uh, marketing, and customer success. So, can you I, uh, do I break HIPAA law if I say can you name some of your clients or no? Can, sure. Sure. Um, so Make a Wish was our Make a Wish Hawaii was our first customer. Okay. And of the 62 national chapters, they grant the most wishes. Uh, last year, they did 1,200. Wow. And so there's a lot of information flying wow. around. That's like three a day, so seven that's, days a week. So there's something people thing. don't think of, right? You're thinking HIPAA compliant email. I'm thinking hospitals, doctors. Clinicians yeah. and such. Yeah. But wait, this is Make a Wish. The market is vast. And, and look at that, Make a Wish, they're dealing with healthcare records? Yes, big time. Children? Yeah. And we even have a, a chapter of the Boy Scouts using our product. Wow. Uh, revenue cycle management, billing collectors, they yeah. love our product because they can use a form letter via Microsoft Mail Merge, hit send, and now they've saved postage on those 300 letters they need to send out to collect bills. And so they, that, it's a perfect fit. And for it's encrypted. And, yes. Yeah. Regardless of and the recipient. HIPAA compliant. Yes. So that's been a nice fit. Uh, sleep age. Man, it, the market's fast. And we believe we've identified 22 million American employees that face HIPAA compliance, which is larger than the Every, U.S. Well, well that's larger than the U.S. healthcare definition. I spent eight hours uh, researching and writing a blog post on it. Uh, so U.S. healthcare. They exclude pharmaceutical and health insurance companies from their definition of U.S. healthcare. So the market is larger than you think. Than what it yeah, is well, pharmaceutical. It. I mean, you, yeah. pharmaceuticals. You've got all the same patient information. Yes. They know what meds yes. you're taking, it's and a if vast you're market. if you're if you're on some kind of um, psych psychology related um, yeah. medication, I mean, Man. all that stuff Just is there. Yeah. Tremendous. Mental health related. Then, yeah. 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 You Mental really. Health. Yeah. You really don't want to break HIPAA. On mental health related. Yeah, yeah, that'd be oh, that'd be yeah. incredible. Now, what yeah. about um, um, uh, well, hospitals? Obviously. Yeah, we've got one hospital under our belt that sales cycle is a little longer, uh, so a little bit more work involved. But um, now that we've got a healthy base of SMB businesses and Small we're getting business. the medium ones, we're just starting to move up the chain so, and take longer shots. So, what is it with hospitals? I mean, yeah. you, know, you know, you've been in the healthcare industry forty years or something yeah, like a, that. A number, yeah, yeah a number of years. I got ten plus or whatever. What is it about hospitals not adopting these yeah. technologies when they're, to me, like they should be the, f the, the leader. Well, Rick, you could probably help me out on this. Uh, 
from what I hear is the procurement cycle, just to buy a toilet seat alone, that's why they charge 500 <laughs> bucks for a toilet seat, because it takes two years to buy the damn thing. So I, that's I what I hear in like, the market. I mean, that might be, you know, but, more I mean, it's on a crazy side. number. <laughs> so yeah. I the think a lot of it's maybe, procurement, yeah. uh, overly <laughs> cautious. I mean, there really are, they, someone could die. Yeah. Um, so that's what we've been seeing. But man, uh, they get hacked a lot. Yeah, I mean they're constantly getting yeah. they're constantly getting getting bombarded. Well, yeah, I mean. because you know, and certainly for healthcare, I think there are two big things that people you know would are pieces of information that uh, hackers love. One is you know they get inform financial information yep. about them because the bills are going back right. and forth, and you know their bills are going back to insurers payments coming back, those kinds of things. Yep. So that's there. But then also a lot of information about people yeah. and as well. So those are kind of, you know, why HIPAA first got started, I right. believe, is to put some, you know, some, uh, some get, get your arms around this yep. information yep. Yep. and keep it. But I really like, you know, what your, your product does is it, it takes it away from you know, having to be always thinking about, you know, is there something HIPAA here? Yeah. This will happen, it will just, your product makes it happen automatically. Yes. I mean, we, we even had to make sure that when we were in the elevator, if we were talking about a patient, right. that we weren't saying what the patient's name, what room they were. Right. I mean, you really couldn't have yeah. a conversation about yeah. a patient. And that's how... Even in an elevator. Yeah. And, you know, how many of us you know, think about, you know, things that we shouldn't be talking about right. when we're in the elevator talking yeah. to, you know, people that we love. And yeah. how do you talk encrypted? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> only, yeah. only Angus talks. Did you talks only to, go so far? Yeah, yeah Angus yeah, can talk encrypted. You can do that on the mainland, yeah. but, uh, but... But that, but that's... Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, and so that's I think figure out how, <laughs> how we can talk encrypted on elevators, <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> so, but that's, I think, the message that we need to, we, we need to convey in this, in, the, in this show. I mean, talking yeah. about your product is one thing. It's the fact that, you know, healthcare information, your personal information, on, yeah. and that is your, your health record, is something that should be kept to you and not something that is spread all around. <laughs> and I'm, I talked to you the other day there, or today, I guess, where you walk into a doctor's office right. and they got the sign-in sheet. Right. And here's the list of all the people who've been in there since yeah. 7 o'clock in the morning. Right. And if i got a good memory, I can look down there and go, phone. oh, look. Or take, take my phone, phone and go, exactly. boom. I just yeah. got a list of all the people that came into this particular right. um, service provider. Yeah. And based on that particular service provider, you know what they're in there for. Right. Yeah. Uh, back to your point, Ricks. We've done some research and blog posts. The average uh, price on the black market for a person's healthcare information is 20x that of a person's credit card. Yeah. Wow. Because you can completely there assume you the identity. You've yeah. got birthday, social security, ailments, I mean. Par par parents' names. Yeah. You know, mother's last name. Right. How many times is that? Mother's maiden right. name. Right. The secret questions. Yeah. yeah. All the, all that secret question yeah. is all in there. Value. Yeah. It's yeah. it's huge. I got that. We got like a record. Uh, if, if credit not cards not. five cents, yeah. and now healthcare records are forty five dollars or more. Yeah. yeah. For a healthcare record. Yeah. Why do you think the 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 hospitals and such? What about insurance companies though? Getting them to jump on the bandwagon. So. Yeah. We have a few uh, from some smaller insurance agencies, but that's definitely in the cards. There's large segments of that business that are dedicated solely to, uh, you know, health insurance and uh, other yeah. privacy. PHI. Because there's two ways you can get that health that HIPAA insurance. Yeah. One is from the provider. Yeah. The other is from the payer. And from the payer. The insurer. Yeah. Okay, we got to pause. Believe it or not, we've done the first half of the show already. Wow. Told you this goes fast, so we got to go to the get Angus off the beach. I don't know what he's got Put that today. Drink out of his hands. And then uh, and I got little, and I got I got to go to the, got to go to the Lua. So we'll be back in just a minute here in Hibachi Talk. Aloha, I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland every Friday at 3 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. We talk about things of interest to those of us who live here, and my past blogs can be found at kawilucas.com. I didn't listen.
Aloha, my name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha. You're watching ThinkTech on ThinkTechHawaii.com, which broadcasts five live talk shows from noon to 5 p.m. every weekday, and then streams our earlier shows all night long. Great content for Hawaii from ThinkTech. Welcome back. We've got Angus here today, and Angus is going to talk to us about, hey, you don't got one tech job. <laughs> Angus. How you doing there, lad? Hey, Nick, Mr. <laughs> Funmeister, it's great to see you. Uh, it's always great to see I, you. I got a wee suggestion for you, though. <laughs> what would that be? Spend some of that money and get a haircut. It's looking pretty bad at the back. <laughs> you better do, do something like that. What do you think there, Mr. Greavy? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Greedy, you had no comment. <laughs> it's about time I seen you speechless. I'm stumped. You stumped there, yeah, good. <laughs> You're encrypted. You didn't understand Scottish. This is encryption. That's compliant. Yeah, this That's is compliant. 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 Right there, lad. Maybe I'll take it all off and I'll look just like you. There, there you go. Be honest. Yeah, yeah. It's very nice. Very nice. Anyway, anyway, we got a, we, I got a wee, uh, no gadget this week because he's the gadget. But the gadget, the thing this week is got, you know, got one tech job. So I saw this the other day there when I was thinking about HIPAA compliance. And uh, Rich, I know you have that picture you can throw up there of this guy with the, um, uh, the saw. Can you see it? Because I saw it earlier on, maybe. Oh, anyway, not too, oh, wait, there it is. There, how's that? How'd you like that job? <laughs> he got the saw and he's cutting the board on the guy's back. Okay, this guy going to be in a hospital, he's going to need HIPAA compliant email for sure. <laughs> Guaranteed. Anyway, that was, that's my no gadget, but my you know got one tech job of the week. And like I say at the end of every live segment, let your wing gang free wherever you be. Aloha! Well, thanks. <laughs> thanks very much, Angus, for that, that great tech, no, no tech job on that. But again, welcome back, to, and we'll continue our conversation now with Aloha Grevy. Hey, uh, <laughs> that guy's going to go viral one of these days. Yeah, almost, right. Uh, <laughs> we, we can it. only hope. <laughs> I um, think he has gone viral. <laughs> <laughs> up here. <laughs> so anyway, we talked about at the beginning of the show, we talked about you know, your encrypted email. Sure. Now you've gone beyond encrypted me email. Now you've taken it to a, a, a new level. You know, uh, digital DLP, digital loss prevention. Yes. You know, I call it, I know it's industry standard name, yeah. but I call it digital leakage prevention because it's, to me it has a different kind of um, connotation than just loss prevention. But tell yeah. us about that, what that sure. piece is now that, that comes in with the, with the encrypted email. Yeah, so uh, at Powbox, our theory is we use customer feedback as a roadmap of what to build and when to build it. And our larger customers and prospects were all asking for the same thing. And they were saying to us, hey, we love that you encrypt all our outbound email. Um, but we're a larger group, and certain segments of our users shouldn't be sending certain things, regardless if it's encrypted or not. So can you scan this group of users for certain data sets? And if you find it, quarantine it and send alerts to the relevant parties. So it's about risk mitigation, kind of a CYA play mm, for mm. Uh, large organizations. So we turned around, we gave them what they want, and we also coupled in inbound and outbound email archiving because that's also another risk mitigation uh, feature for these people. Uh, HR, disaster recovery, uh, e-discovery, things like that. Yeah, uh, Hillary Clinton. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so we built that, and our longer-term play is to build a better mousetrap with DLP, and we'd like to integrate the Amazon Web Services machine learning API mm -hmm. uh, once we get a big enough data set going for our customers. And so we want to use machine, machine learning to even in, make better results on our outbound DLP scanning. And then down the road, there might be a chance we build the same concept for inbound 
email DLP. Mm. Uh, we're still waiting to talk to more customers to see if that's a thing. But if it is a thing, uh, that could be a, quite a differentiator for us because in the marketplace now, all the DLP players focus on outbound DLP. Right. And we've gone a step further in our encryption service as it is today where we're encrypting inbound and outbound email from the get-go. Right. So it wouldn't be a logical, it wouldn't be a huge jump, knock on wood, to turn around and provide this inbound DLP, provided we hear enough customer feedback to support the to need. support this support the, yeah why build build it and they will come kind of thing might yeah. not work in this no, particular case I, not I don't believe that at all so, but give us an example of a D, of a DLP that you'd want to stop going out so sure. th this is the the thing so the viewer can say okay well what could possibly what would I possibly want to stop going out from a sure. particular group sure so one of our early adopters is Kahala Nui uh, retirement home in Kahala okay and so they have an on-premise exchange server and our service wraps around their product or their on-site server. Mm -hmm. And so they approached us and said, hey, we'd like this outbound DLP. And we have certain segments of our user base that just have no business sending things like social security numbers, Medicaid numbers, uh, Medicare numbers, or even uh, they have three corporate credit cards on file. Okay. And they wouldn't want those wow. corporate credit cards being sent by this segment of users okay. who it's not in their job function anyway to be doing these services. Mm. So that's what we initially turned around and gave them on a fast release cycle. Do I get so I can I get reports? So I can see like I can you know you, you give me notifications that yeah. um, uh, that you prevented this from happening. Right. But then if you got a, a report and you see that some particular individual sending out a lot, you can yeah. go you can alert the manager and say, we're not sure why this person's doing this. Yeah. So the uh, the DLP admin. Okay. Yeah, we're building out functionality for that particular job function. And again, we can use machine learning where the API is already built for us in Amazon Web Services. Mm -hmm. And we can say, hey, look, here's a pattern. Um, I think this is an extra special kind of occurrence going here. This might not be accidental. Mm. Maybe pay special attention. attention. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. A, it's an alert. So it becomes a pro it's, it's not it's a proactive, you know, it's proactive in a number of ways. You yes. know, you're proactive in encrypting everything, proactive in doing the DLP, yeah. but you're also proactive in giving someone a heads up that something doesn't seem quite right. Yeah, and I think that's one of the main reasons we, we put our infrastructure in AWS is because we want to leverage the resources available in their infrastructure to have a competitive advantage over the marketplace. Right. And so, you know, we get rid of physical servers, we take advantage of the power of, and the affordability of the cloud. Great. Right. But now, hey, they got this ML stuff. Let's not try and rewrite the freaking, you know. The, yeah, it's already there. It's Let's already there. Plug into it. So, I, and I was just going to so. say, you're using, you're using. So, and you're not, you're using the the big name, big names, yeah. and the tools. So, you're you're helping um, Google to be better email. You're helping Office 365 and Microsoft to be better email. You're helping all of the different the Yahoos or whatever whatever people are using. Yeah. You're helping that to be a better email without us having to pay large dollar amounts to these organizations. Or if you've got a free one, yeah. then you've got other issues you got to deal with, and maybe it's an alerting someone that you shouldn't be using these free emails. Yeah, it needs to be more of a managed kind of situation. Especially on the HIPAA side, I yeah. mean that oftentimes is breaking the law. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you know, Google comes around and says, uh, "Oh, I'm HIPAA compliant." What's your response to that? Or Microsoft? You know, uh, it, depends. Yeah. Gmail.com, no. No. Google Apps, G Suite, you can be, but you need to do certain things. Yep. And our service can complement that by wrapping around it. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of customers that stay on G Suite, but they use Powerbox to encapsulate their inbound and outbound email in transit. Right. It's a seamless deployment relatively. It takes 30 minutes for the entire enterprise. Yeah. And there's no client op, uh, configuration to set on each device. And you don't have to do any training. That's correct. And in an enterprise, that can be significant. Uh, you got significant a thousand expense. employees, yeah. and then you announce that you, you don't even have to announce that you're encrypting everybody's email. Yeah. You just do it. Yeah. And it's, it just happens, and then it's already in the administration, and, and your compliance people are very happy that this stuff yeah. has been yeah, put in place and, been taken, and care taken care of. So, um, so the, the, now DLP is not new. I mean, right. there's other other players in that space. Right. So, but I don't know of any that's got it wrapped around email. So that's there's it. a few, but they're, they're, most of them are doing pattern matching, which we've already built. That's pretty much the standard. But okay. to incorporate the new tools available, so specifically Amazon. AWS machine learning. Yeah. 
That's new, and that's going to keep us ahead of the game. One of our measures of success is copycats. So we know mm -hmm. that there will be people that copy us, mm -hmm. but if we continue to stay razor focused on the customer demands and focus on the customer, I think we're going to continue to innovate and stay ahead of the curve and represent an existential threat to a large incumbent mm -hmm. within five or six years. So I want to uh, digress just a little bit, because you've done a lot in the community also in, in the San Francisco area. So I think it's, it's good to, to, announce, you know, to let people know. Not only have you gone over there, you've, you've grown, you're growing this company. Yeah. You're the ultimate entrepreneur. You're looking for funding, by the way. So go to www.paulbox.com. Um, right. I can say that, right? So uh, you can. Okay. I can. <laughs> I think I just did. <laughs> Angus did. Angus did. Angus did. You know, someone might be looking for some money. Um, but so, but you've done some stuff in the community, some kind of unique things that sure. I thought are kind of kind of neat. Yeah. So give us. I, I'm not going to steal your thunder. Sure. sure. So, uh, so I, I noticed, uh, you know, the successful business people in Hawaii, present company included, the way to demonstrate. Uh, business leadership is giving back to the community, mm -hmm. and here in Hawaii, it's especially amplified because you know it's an island uh, location. So I just thought it'd be fun to do something to give back to California and San Francisco. So when we hit 100 customers, we gave away 100 Spam Musa bees and 100 pairs of socks down on the street in the Mission oh, District, yeah. wow. Mission in 16. And then we got into an accelerator called 500 Startups last summer. Mm -hmm. We went and gave away 500 Spam Musa bees on the Market Street. Okay. And that got picked up by the governor and uh, KITV cool. here, so that was neat. Yeah. And then when we hit 500 customers last uh, winter, uh, we gave away 500 bowls of Kulo Pig mm -hmm. uh, on, in the Mission District. Uh, so a lot of times, most of the people there, that was their first time having that kind of Hawaiian food. Yeah. So I just thought it would be something nice to do. And, you know, I know my parents really like when we do it. So. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. One, of the, one of the cultural things that you've, you've brought there. Yeah. Um, You've got, and, and so uh, we only got like a little over a minute. So, so give us your website and then any, any Facebook sites or anything else that you sure. should get, get out there. So it's uh, powbox.com. We're the easiest way to send and receive HIPAA compliant email. We're very easy to find online. We do that on purpose, P-A-U-B-O-X.com. Okay. And um, we're just doing it. And then follow and follow up. So anyway, no one goes, oh, you got, well, you're using it. Yeah, My good, well, good thing I didn't tip this thing water. upside down. Anyway, this is your autograph solo cup, number 116 in the series. Yeah. I don't think we were giving them out the first time you were on the show. I'll make so, sure I bring it back in yeah, one in, piece. In one piece. I expect to see that on one of your future um, uh um, uh, when you're giving a, a spam moose of bees. Yeah. It, red solo cups. In red solo cups. Yeah. That'd be awesome. <laughs> anyway, this is Gordo the Tech Sour here with uh, Rick's the Fun Meister. Uh, Wednesdays at 2 now o'clock. 2 now o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> we got Rich and Ray are helping us. So please um, come and watch us again live on Think Tech. Thank everybody for helping us pull this together. And like we say at the end of every show, one, two, three. How, how you, you doing? doing? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rich. Come on, base.